That's it. I like the breathing as well. Yeah, it's quite menacing, isn't it? (laughs) I'm knackered. (laughs) Fucking shattered. Our guest today is Mark, and he is a professional dancer currently performing in Magic Mike. Welcome, Mark. Hey, thanks for having me. Welcome. I appreciate you, boys. Oh, dancing. You love a dance, Joe, don't you? Not in the slightest. Don't give me your lying. I fucking hate dancing. Bull. What do you mean, bull dancing? (laughs) Ballroom dancing. Bull. What's your signature move? I don't have one. Come on. We were at a wedding weekend just gone, mate. And even after the pints and pints of sangria that I was drinking. It's actually lovely. It had to be homemade sangria. Have you had sangria before? Yeah. Mark, you had sangria before? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Well, I, I didn't really know what it was. I just semi-made up. I got. I said, can I have a bottle of red wine? They said, yeah. And I poured it in a jug of Pims. Ah. And it made an unbelievable drink. So I was just... Anyway, even after that amount of sangria, made up sangria, my wife turned to me and said, you come for a dance? And I went, not a fucking chance. <laughs> oh, that was your opportunity, bro. For To dance? Yeah, to, to kick open the door to the world of dance. What Do you like a dance, Tom? Yes. Do you? Yeah, I love a dance. What's your signature move? Well, because of my age, Joe, it's quite ravey. It's a little bit big fish. What's a fish. rave move? Big fish, little fish, cardboard box. Just give us a little arm version. It's a lot of that. Yeah, top half. Top yeah. body. There might be a little bit of lower half, but the feet fundamentally are planted. Mm. The upper body does it all. Why might... do I feel incredibly uncomfortable looking at you do stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Explain. I don't know. Let's explore that. Well, there's no music. It's a bit, I don't know, it just makes me feel weird. I like dancing so much, Joe, that I will dance around the kitchen with kitchen utensils. No music? Say no more. Mm. That's it. Right, Mark, What? surely you've got to be good. At what level do you have to be at dancing to class yourself a professional? I guess uh, it's, it's almost the same as anything. You've kind of just got to get paid to do whatever it is you do. Um, so yeah, I, I think like there's a there's a whole range of like of talent out there because like there's so much. I mean, there's so much variety in what you do. You can't really say someone's good because they might be good at something that's really unique and specific, and then like say dog shit but like un- unrehearsed and unpracticed at something else or un- untrained at something else so it's kind of hard uh, kind of a hard basket but if you're booked to do a certain job and you can execute it then you could be a professional whatever it is do you joe do you admire that the entirely natural dancer or the dancer who performs a uh, pre-existing move the, a natural dancer yeah What's let's it? say someone's got you see someone dancing in a club they've got entirely their own style mm. they live in their own world or someone who's maybe very good at doing something formulaic. I like that. Why am I starting to move? I'm trying to You're move. You're starting hey, to it's dance. Infectious. <laughs> it's infectious. Like, I Get you some I to... kitchen cutlery and you'll be away. <laughs> I quite like the natural rhythm to see someone. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but then I like I like watching um, like professional dance setups that when the group's like all in. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck you am danced I danced again. Stop moving. When they're like all moving in, in sync. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I, I like I like watching people dance, both naturally and formulaically. But I just there's not a chance of me doing it. Were, were you always a good dancer? When when was the moment that you went, fucking hell, I'm good at this. I'm gonna make this my real life pre- profession. I, do you know? I think there actually is a standout moment, but I could have completely made it up. It's one of those things that happened so long ago. It's almost like a story I might have made up. But um, <laughs> I was when I started, I was that kid who was always. Uh, like looking at the person next to me to see if I was getting it right. Like I had no memory, I had no brain, I had no like idea of what my body was doing. Um, but I enjoyed it, so I stuck with it just for fun. Uh, and then I got to a point where I eventually had an exam result that was actually quite decent. It was like, it wasn't just a pass, it was, okay, cool, so you're actually better than the pass grade. And I went, okay, cool, maybe putting more work in will actually lead to something. And then I uh, pursued it a little bit more heavily, uh, focused on it. and. Yeah, it eventually ended up where I am now, I guess. See, I think, Joe, that the reasons you don't like dancing, is it because you you aren't very good at it? Can't or dance. because you're worried what people might think if they see you dancing? Good question. I think, uh, yeah, it's good. I've not thought about that properly as to why. I can't dance. But so lots of people would say they can't dance, but they do dance. It's more of a, like, what's the what's the point? What What's the purpose of me dancing? Like, what's the purpose of dancing? Joy. Unbridled joy and happiness, it's freedom, expression—the I mean, same feeling you get when you slap someone in the shoulder in a ruck. 
<laughs> that same that same expression, except you don't get to see the other person writhing in pain. You just <laughs> you just feel it in your own body, and it's for yourself. There have been moments. That, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit there's been moments where I've let myself loose mm. and forgotten that anyone is looking at me or judging me. I think that's the biggest sticking point of. I can't dance, or I, I believe I can't dance. I don't back myself in my dancing or rhythm ability. Mm. So therefore, I don't do it because people are going to be like, what the fuck is that <laughs> giant oath doing? <laughs> like, he's taken up half the floor so no one else can dance. He's getting really sweaty, so sweaty that actually if I move my arms, I'm actually flicking it in people's eyes. So it's actually quite unsociable. Yeah. Um, but there have been moments where you really let yourself go and you feel... Not alive, that's too cheap, but you feel free. Yeah. You feel really free. Do you find yourself or have you found yourself ever thinking that way about somebody that you're watching in a club? Like, have you ever been like in a club and actually paying attention to somebody having a good time and being like, yeah, you shouldn't be doing that? Because if you haven't, then there's probably a good chance that no one's going to like care about you doing it yourself. But if you have, then I guess like maybe that's kind of born and bred you know, that insecurity, if that makes sense. Yeah. I just... if, you, if you haven't been like, oh, that knob there is having way too good a time. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, has that, has that ever crossed your mind? No. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Odds are, well, first of all, the size of you, no one's going to mess with you anyway. No one's going to, no one's going to give you a second thought. And also like, no one, no one really cares what you're doing. So you think I should dance more? Give it a crack, man. Yeah. I think that's the secret to it. Like, it's not caring what other people think. So mm. without... Wanting to stereotype your home country of New Zealand, anyway, Mark. Could never do that. You, uh, when when you told us before the show where you grew up, you grew up just north of Wellington. Mm -hmm. I don't think of New Zealand as a particularly expressive place. And I imagine if you grew up in a small town in New Zealand, then there'd be a lot of men who wouldn't dance. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's not something uh, that a lot of guys do uh, specifically. Um, I, I think... The more, like, the larger the center, like, if you're going to Auckland or Wellington, the more uh, prevalent the arts are. Um, so I think you will find there's more, uh, there's more, like, coverage of, of, you know, the population actually, like, really diving in and appreciating it. But, yeah, it's kind of like being in a small town, like, rural area anywhere. Um, you know, the, there wasn't a lot, you know, there, there weren't many people doing what we, what we did um, and doing the same training as us. It was very, yeah, focused on, like, the traditional... Uh, you know, I guess like sports and, and even like drama acting, um, there were definitely more people doing that than there were dancing. Any dance lessons in uh, in your past, Tom? Or has it all been natural? Mainly been natural because um, I think you pick... Actually, this is a question for you, Mark. Do you think you end up dancing in a particular way because the music you're into or do you get into the music you're into because you like dancing to it? Ooh, Okay. I feel like definitely as I got as I got older, I discovered more music and more types of music, and then the different music that you listen to kind of leads you in a different direction. So like if you're if you're listening to like Alice in Chains, you're not going to be doing like you know any kind of flowy hip hoppy movement. You're going to be like smacking the wall down, right? Whereas if you do travel into the realm of like hip hop, rhythm, blues, like you're actually going to find more of a flow to the music, and your body is just going to replicate that. So yeah, I think the music dictates where you go with your body and how you feel, for sure. Um, but there is, yeah, I, I guess there's a both sides to that. You know, that's a really good, that's a really good question. Yeah. Can you can you dance without music, or do you have to have a beat? I hate doing it without music. Do you? I really don't like doing it without music. But you can. Like some people love it because there's, I guess, ultimate freedom. Like there's nothing actually, you know, there's nothing holding you down or you know, kind of boxing you, pigeonholing you into a certain area or um, repertoire of moves, I guess. Um, you can just do whatever the hell you want, whatever you feel. Um, but I personally don't like it very much. I love having music and rhythm around me when I'm moving. We used to have a fine system at the club that I introduced, funny enough, uh, the Wheel of Misfortune. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd have to have a spin on the wheel if you were, like, late for meetings or wrong kit or something like that. And there'd be stuff on it... Um, like fifty pound fine, hundred pound fine, spray tan, um, wash one of the boys' cars, wear a suit to work day, um, and the worst one on there was a sixty second dance <laughs> with no music, yeah. and 
it was like, yeah, in theory, you're like, that's a that's a great punishment. You get boys, you get one of the boys up to dance. No yeah. music at the front of the front of the room. Ball. They get up because they've rolled or they've spun that one, and all the boys, their heads would drop and be like, fuck. I can't watch this. <laughs> it is the most yeah. uncomfortable thing going. I, yeah, I 100% agree. I would totally relate to that. There's I just no cool way you can dance without music. No, it's just I don't like, do it. you know, what's, what's going on? There's nothing here. It's the same feeling I get when I like watch somebody start to sing in a film or in a, in a TV show. Like we were watching, uh, my missus and I are watching Ted Lasso at the moment. And every now and then, that's a great TV show, but every now and then, They'll just burst into song like it's quite American, and I just go, oh, like it really like it really grafts me when that happens, and it's the same. I guess it's the same kind of like cringe effect, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you just sit there and I you're love, like, I love it and oh. hate it at the same time. Yeah, I'm like oh, I can't take my eyes off it. Mm. I really don't want to look anymore. Yeah, um, that's not a style of dancing, clearly. Oh, it might be, but what what are the different genres, if that's the right mm. term to use for dance? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. I guess I'm going to go with what I learned in college and the, the way classes are kind of split in college. So um, you've got your, you know, jazz, tap, you've got hip hop, you've got ballet, uh, contemporary. Um, I would say musical theatre is probably its own uh, its own genre as well. Um, and those, I, I, I hope I'm not missing anything, but those are like kind of your core styles. And then, you know, they can mix and match and they can, you know, fuse as well and cross over. But those would be like your, I guess, pillars um, of training, especially if you're if you're going to a performing arts college. Those are the classes that you'll take um, to kind of build that overall skill set as a mover, because they will whatever you're learning will help. You know, like it doesn't matter if you're a ballet dancer, like it's gonna help with your movement in in, in lots of uh, lots of styles and lots of uh, situations, I guess. So, Joe, of that list, I'm gonna let you become an expert in one of those styles. Which style are you choosing? Tap. Yes. Tap. Nice. I'm fucking tapping all the way, mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because surely it's just your feet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's your, well, your lower half. There's not a lot. You just go side to side. Yeah. From the tap that I've. <laughs> and I've it's come bloody across. hard. It's so hard. I cannot tap to save my life. I did it for two years in college uh, or in, in full time, that's what we call it in Australia. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't. I could not put foot to floor. I couldn't do it. It just looks so. It, it's so satisfying to watch. Mm -hmm. It must be so satisfying to actually like. Yeah. Complete. You know, I'm especially like smile on your yeah. face. I just, the I idea just of it. like you know like tap shit. Yeah. And I want to. And plus, I want to have the ability to um, dance to Mr. Bojangles. Mm. Yeah. Classic. Mr. Bojangles. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> yeah, stop saying stuff. Out top there. head out. That's yeah. It. Yeah. I just want that ability tap, surely. Uh -huh. What about you? What you got? Hmm. Not tap for me, although if you watch someone like Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire, mm. it is amazing. Yeah. Um Fred Astaire? Yeah. The comedian. <laughs> Not Freddie Star. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Astaire. Might be the greatest dancer ever, is he? Mark? One of them, yeah. yeah. Don't ask me many questions about him, but I know I know who you're talking about. Oh God, that's not. He's very, he's very like suave, top heavy. Like his feet are just doing their own thing, yeah. and he's just very cool. Might have a cane on going. Yeah. So is that what you're going for? No, yeah. I'm no. not going for that. Ballet is an interesting one because I went to the ballet once, having had no interest in ballet, mm. and I was told to go. They said, "Well, look, you love sport. Go and watch ballet because you'd be blown away by the athleticism." And it is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's nuts. Like the the ballet is, is 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 it's almost I mean it is unique, um, but in the way they train. So there's a set syllabus and a set uh, like I'm going to use the word repertoire again, like of moves and of movements that you just train your entire life for perfection. And in a you know uh, in a ballet company's eyes, there's no perfection. Perfection doesn't exist. So you're going day in and day out, five, six hours a day from probably when you're about five, six years old is probably normally when they would, uh, you know, those those dancers would start training and you're doing the same shit for your whole life. So you get to 25, 30, probably like the end of a ballerina's car uh, career and you've just done the same steps, the same warm up, the same routines over and over and over again. You might mix up the, uh, the order of the movements, but it's the same all the way through. So the athleticism of it is one thing, but also like the mental fortitude to not have any variety in your life whatsoever is astounding. Like, so, I don't know how you don't get bored. It's a bit like French classic cuisine. Mm. Tell me more. Um, <laughs> you know, like you've got, 
your French classics. Cuisine, yeah. Cuisine, yeah. In food, yeah. Bread, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and they're the, they're they're the they're the things you cook. So that's the analogy I'm using. Then <laughs> <laughs> with ballet, these are the ballet moves you've got. You've got a coq au vin. Uh, the what? Coq au vin. That's a food. Yeah, we're talking What's about food. Yeah, ballet. It's your analogy. You came up with it. Yeah, but you're meant to come up with a ballet move. Oh, a, a jeté. Period. Let's go jeté. It's like oh, a leap. It's a split leap. There you go. So the the jeté yep. is like the red wine jus mm. mm-hmm. that you have to have yep. in these French classic but, dishes. But it never really changes. But is there is there like a surely there must be like modern ballet or like a hip hop mm. ballet or this. There are different take- versions of it. Hundred percent. Yeah, there are there are there are different takes and uh, and appropriations, I guess, of ballet itself. But you're never going to go and watch. Um, I can't even like Swan Lake. You're never going to watch an adaptation of Swan Lake from a real ballet company unless they've gone completely sideways and they want to try something new just for the hell of it. Like the pride of ballet and its origins is just this one thing, and we get it as good as we can. Like we perfect it as much as we can, and we're going to dedicate everything we have to this one uh, discipline. And that's the beauty of it. Like that's that's the whole, that's the pride of what ballet is, I guess. Fucks up your toes though, surely. Yeah. Like yeah. some of the shit they do on their toes. Mm-hmm. I'm nah, wondering mate. though, see I think of all the different dance, yes, tap would be nice to do. But I think the one that you're closest to doing, Joe, in some weird way is ballet because the lift, what we might call the Swayze lift mm. from Dirty Dancing, Joe, that's not entirely dissimilar to what you have to do at the line out. Oh, for it's very fuck similar. Sake. It's great. Just, yeah, I'm sick of this. <laughs> you're just pigeonholing me. <laughs> you're just you're not letting me express myself. So you're essentially, you're just saying I'm gonna be good at ballet because I can lift shit. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it's very handy. Very very handy. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't. You're trying to avoid being handy because that's not a good. <laughs> that's not worked out for you in the past, has it? I know oh, it's definitely ah. not worked out. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was... Oh, you piece of shit, Mark. <laughs> Fuck's sake, so teed up. <laughs> um, ooh, I just, I'm sick of you pigeonholing me. Mate, okay. if I want to fucking break dance the shit out of the dance if, if floor, then I will do that. In that case, Mark, let's give Joe three options of mm. like outrageous moves not related to what he does in rugby Okay, that he could maybe one day... Perfect. I don't know if there's a head spin in there. What would you Master. got to do? Head spin's one. That's a great one. What about start. that teddy bear roll? What the hell's a teddy bear roll? Like where you, you get on the floor and uh, then you make your legs as wide as possible and then you roll. <laughs> Which way? Just like, round. Like forward? No, backwards. you roll round. Like, have you never seen like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you keep your legs... <laughs> windmill. You're talking about windmill. You're yeah. talking about a windmill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then spinning. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'd yeah, yeah, that. yeah. You could do a windmill. No worries. It's all about momentum, baby. Oh. That's all it is. Wow. I mean, I can't do it, but it's all about momentum, baby. I've got some momentum that... Would... Yes. <laughs> as long as... It's the, the trouble is getting it moving from the off. And stopped. Mm. And stopped. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so... So you've got windmill. We've windmill. got head We've got a head spin. What else can you do, Mark? Are we going to stick to braking? The wo- no, anything. He- anything. Because, mate, I'm backing myself. Ooh, okay. Are we Are we talking like a... Is this something that you're going to practice? Yeah. Or is this something that we're... Yeah? Daily. Okay, well let's 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 do a classic. Let's give you a wave. Let's give you a wave. A wave. That's right. Yeah, something that you do with your hands. If you're nailed it. That's right. I mean, we could just leave it there if you like. Go I, I would add to it, having seen that wave. <laughs> yeah. What's what's a wave? A wave is the uh, it's it's the classic send it around the table. That's what yes. that's what a wave is. I apologize. I've been in the same job for three years. I haven't trained a wave for a long time. <laughs> but essentially, it's from one point. You're following a point across your body to the next point and you can send it around we can we can add that to your list Joe well, just give us a little demo mine, that's for sure Ryan, we'll put this on social media Ryan turn the cameras off now and we'll put this on the YouTube channel I can give you I can give you a quick crash course if you like please, yes, please. great so straight arms one choose a hand let's go with the right hand and you're just going to drop the wrist right and now you're going to sit you're gonna pick your elbow up almost like you're sitting your hand on the table that's it and then from here you're going to push your arm away and like hug your shoulder that's nice it. so those are the three steps so you're going to drop your wrist then you're going to bring your elbow up. That's it. And Shit. now you're going to hug your shoulder. Shit, I, hugged, I was still hugging. No, that's cool. Let's go wrist oh, again. Okay, wrist. One, two oh. for elbow, shoulder. That's it. Shoulder. So if you... Oh, hang on. When I shoulder, do I go straight? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That's it. I mean, we could start with one arm, so you could just start with your right hand. That's wrist. it. Wrist. <laughs> elbow. Elbow. And then shoulder. 
Shorter. That's it. Nice. And now if you slow it down, that is going to turn into, please forgive me, anyone watching this. <laughs> God, all of my mentors are going to be spitting fire. This is, this is good, Joe. That's You're it. dancing. Yeah, elbow. Elbow high. And then shoulder. Great. And now with your left hand, you want to reverse it. So you're going to start with your shoulder and then you're going to hit your elbow and then you're going to send it out to your wrist. What's this arm doing? It's chilling. It's chilling. <laughs> the so right it's creating the illusion of travel if it it stays out. I can choke myself out here. Shh. Why is my... What? That's it. Wrist oh. to the ground. That's it. Bang. Add that to your list. Okay, right. Just speed it up and I'll just... Uh, okay. So Mark, wrist, can you just wrist, grade elbow, it as it goes elbow, through this? Shoulder. Shoulder. Shoulder again. Shoulder. Elbow. <laughs> wrist <laughs> Boom. I'm going to give that a solid three and that's that's fantastic that's a great start yes fuck it hurt in my neck this Boom. <laughs> oh my god you do that for an hour you're going to get that up to a nine Joe, you're why bad. aren't you doing it because I've already said that I like dancing we're getting we're turning you into a dancer <laughs> that's what this has become we're, con we're convincing Joe to start dancing there you go <laughs> this watching him there Mark has, has posed a question in mm. my head Joe, when he was doing the wave, became camper than he already is. Is that one of the secrets of good dancing? 100%. Yeah. Camp it up. The freedom, the freedom of being camp is, is the one, I think. Yeah, but you can, I'm you can explore. As camp as they come, mate. I still can't dance. Mate, it's going to help you. If you can explore all the realms of masculinity, you'll be, you'll be right on. That's it. I like the breathing as well. The heavy... <laughs> yeah, it's quite menacing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I'm knackered. I'm fucking shattered. So hard work. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's Who's, why I don't do it. Who is? Because I would assume, and again, this is a stereotype, I would assume that rugby players in general aren't great dancers. Maka Bunapola. Really? Wonderful. The hips on that man. Style? Yeah. What style? Just free, free lance. No, freestyle. Just, he just lets his body go. Uh, I mean, it takes him a good 10 points yeah. before he gets there, but he'll get the music on and then he's just, he's just moving. Yeah. Writhing. Wow. Writh writhing. Writhing. Yeah. Is it writhing? Can be writhing. Yeah. yeah. Riding. He's riding. Mm. Writhing. My pony. Just. <laughs> <laughs> he's just loving life. So, uh, as I've just proved, <laughs> I'll ask the question anyway, but mm. I've, I've, I've proved it. Anyone can dance. Yeah. Is that right? Definitely. So, surely that is more doable than like when someone says anyone can sing. That's not true. Ooh, anyone yeah. can, can get to a level where they can trying it but mm. anyone can dance because dance is so well it's universal like you you move your body you know like you you literally stand up and walk to get to work don't you so you're already utilizing your body it's just just trying to find shapes you know that you're not necessarily used to like anyone anyone can practice those shapes but i think comparing it to singing is a little bit difficult because singing is something that's really uh like you can't look in the mirror and go that doesn't sound right you know, you can look in the mirror and be like, okay, so my, whatever I'm doing with my body doesn't look like the person next to me, but you can't necessarily do that with a voice. I think like you, it's got to be more of an internal, um, like critique and criticism. You've got to be able to recognize what you're doing wrong to fix it rather than like having the visual aid, I think. So I don't know. And also if you just don't have a voice that sounds good, then it's really hard to, <laughs> you know, to perfect it. You can you can learn notes and things for sure. What's the move that's been toughest to learn that you've gone, fuck, that's taken me a while and I'm so proud of myself that I can actually do that now? Do you know what? Um, it's actually, uh, like, it's it's not really a dance move, but it's a back tuck, so it's a it's a back flip. <gasps> like, that that took me so long to learn. It was, it was so foreign to me. Like, I hadn't, uh, I... I Started dancing when I was seven, and then when I was 18, I went off to a dance college. And at dance college, all of a sudden, we have, like, acrobatics classes. And it's quite important for, like, a male dancer in the commercial world to be able to have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. Um, but I'd not... To get to get noticed. To get noticed, to do something flashy, like, quite often on a gig or uh, in a routine, there's going to be a moment of, like, wow, there's a trick being, you know, being thrown out in the middle just to, like you know, break the tempo of the routine. And it's just a big wow effect. So it's quite important. Um, he was like, oh, anyway, uh, so I'd never spent any time upside down in my life. Uh, and then all of a sudden this acro class comes through and we're learning, you know, like basic stuff. You start with cartwheels, one hand cartwheels, and you do a barani, which is a cartwheel with no hand. So it's a really big... Nice. Um, yeah, it's really, really Fuck cool. Fuck that. Surely yeah. you just hit your head on the floor. <laughs> Surely no arms, you just look bonk. exactly what happened to me. I wish I really, I, I wish I had footage of when I smacked my head on the floor of the Acro Studio. <laughs> it's it's happened. Um, hang on, hang on. What did you just say? 
smacked my head on the floor of the Acro studio. The Acro? Acrobatic studio, yeah. Oh, that's what that's short for. Mm. Fuck. My daughter, Maggie, she uh, she does Acro once a week. Yes. I don't, I've, and, and I've only just, so it means acrobatic. Mm. Is it? You, you might know, know what does, Maggie yeah. was doing once a week. <laughs> but no, I let her go in there. And she tells me it's like dance acro thing. Mm. I, I just knew it as acro. And then <laughs> yep. this is only the other time I've heard acro apart from from my six year old daughter. So I'm asking a professional what acro means. And it's just short for acrobat. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the best skills to have because, you know, like you said, I mean, like we said before, if you're, if you're a human being, you move. So dancing isn't too foreign, but you know, jumping and being in the air upside down, twisting, all of that stuff is so foreign to anybody. It's a really important skill to have you know from the get-go because as you're as you're as a kid you're quite fearless and you just throw yourself away and you're easier to catch too so your teachers can actually slow you down if you're getting it wrong um but when you're an 18 year old and you're you weigh like 68 75 kilos whatever it was you know your teacher's not going to be able to catch you if you if you're landing on your neck so um yeah, it, uh, that was for me the most difficult thing. It's, it took me months, like lunch breaks, standing in front of a pad, like, oh, deep breath. All right, chuck a song on, and then when the when the chorus kicks in, I'm gonna fucking send it. Like that was definitely the hardest thing for me to learn. What is the secret of if uh, people listen to this and mm. ill-advisedly want to attempt this at home? Oh God, do you don't. lead with the arms, no, 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 the no, no, head, no, no, or the no, no. knees? I'm not liable for this at all. <laughs> Um, height, height is key. Oh, so you get the rotation. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to get the rotation anyway. So you're not, when you, when you flip, you don't aim to like go backwards or to get around. Your aim is to get off the ground so that there's room for rotation. Like there's no point in, in rotating if you've not got height, cause you're literally just going to go straight to the ground. So you want to fully extend and jump. Don't do this at home and said, Mark told you how to flip. <laughs> Like that's injuries waiting to happen, but you want to fully extend. And then at the top of that jump, you're going to pull your body, like your knees into your body. And that like that closure of your limbs, I guess, is going to send you over. And that's how you get the rotation to that's go. That's I've been going wrong. Mm. You got I, to don't do, I don't do the knee tuck. I just go straight back. Always ends badly on the track. I've seen it. Mm. What do you mean you've seen it? So that's the error you make. Get your height, Joe. Get some height. Right, and yeah. only now, after several times of <laughs> failing, you're deciding to give me some advice on it. That's convenient. Have you ever done a backflip? I'd love to do a backflip. Oh, That's not an answer. No, but I haven't. But I honestly, at the age of 48, if I could learn to do a backflip, I don't know if there's any hey, worlds for me to conquer. You know what they say. There's no uh, dogs <laughs> that can't learn. They do say that. Mm-hmm. Every dog can learn. I've heard that before. Every dog has its day to learn that's stuff. Right, yes. Told you. Mm, sky's that's, the limit. That's where that comes from. Mm-hmm. Sky isn't the limit because there's an ozone layer. Mm-hmm. It's trapping us all, really, isn't it, the ozone? I think it should take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. I'm Joe Marler. From the Joe Marler Show. We now do socks that you can also wear on your hands, apparently. And the cool thing about these socks are not only are they jazzy and got my face on them for some ridiculous reason. Uh, stand for socks. Every pair you buy of the Joe Marler Show socks will then donate a pair of warm antibacterial ones to someone who desperately needs them. So go on, go buy some. Not sure why he's thrown a pair at me. If you, if you, if you, if you buy them, they won't. They will come in the post in a normal way, and they won't be thrown at you. Stay classy. Where insert the place that you live at now. <laughs> Hit the link below if you want a pair of socks that you can then pretend to be a cat and lick yourself. Those were the adverts. Joe, you asked me at the start of the show if I've ever had dance lessons. There was one time when me and Murph went to a dance lesson just to see what it was like. And the thing that I found most problematic, Mark, mm. wasn't any of the individual moves, which by themselves were all achievable to a certain extent. Yeah. It was remembering them in sequence. Yeah. So, Joe, it was like being given the most complicated directions, like someone going down the street, turn left. When you get to the bridge, go over the bridge. About 20 instructions, and you could remember the first two or three, mm. and then you just down, go back. Down just, the street, turn left. That's it. And then at the end, you just sort of standing there clicking your fingers going, what the fuck was I meant to be doing now? Why the yeah. fuck couldn't you remember down the street, turn left? It's a hard move. <laughs> so the choreography, know, the the, surely, yeah. so the remembrance of choreography must be 
the hardest thing to do no it's a skill to learn yeah it's 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 something that i struggled with a lot um and it's repetition it always is um is it always is it always and a one two three four mm. five six seven eight is does it just go up to eight or does it keep going uh typically it'll just end at eight yeah why so, uh because i thought I mean, again, this, I think this is quite a technical question musically, and I don't have the. Oh, it's a more of a music beat. Definitely oh. to do with the music. And yeah. one, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Two. Fuck off. Why aren't you starting on one? I'm sure they skip one. But you did it the first time. <laughs> that was the introductory <laughs> one. And then when they're into the smooth of, <laughs> swing of it, they lose the one. It's sad. A two, three, four, five, and they. They just end up on two and a two. <laughs> it's because you threw an and a in there. Oh, shit. There you go. On that one. was the one. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll one, be it. Three. It's just phrasing. So uh, the music will like tend to repeat a phrase every eight counts, I guess. Uh, and it's easy, quite easy for us to to uh, like segment routines in. So it's like, uh, say for example, we've got choreography for two counts of eight, and then there's a freestyle for one count of eight. So you learn your two phrases and then <laughs> like you know yeah and then you Sorry. know that, okay i've got to be over there doing a freestyle for a bit every time you start, you start talking or something and i make eye contact i just want to dance with you hey, <laughs> do you know what Stop. that's a fantastic selling point hey, for me hey, hire me hey, please hey, just want to dance I'm sorry. you're gonna honestly by the time we finish this show joe you're dancing get fucked <laughs> you spent most of the time denying it and yet here we are. Yeah, well, I just... We're already halfway there. What about dance competitions? Mm. Now, did you do any when growing up? Uh, yeah, so I, growing up for me was more syllabus work. So when I was at my home studio, um, I was doing more uh, like exam work. So throughout the year, we'd learn, um, I don't know, like seven or eight different like routines, numbers, whatever. Um, and then we would sit an exam, we would be marked on it and then great, put that away. And then we're on to next year stuff. So that's what I would, that's what I was doing until I was about 18. Um, and that's a little unusual for today's, uh, dance training world, I guess. So a lot of colleges will do some syllabus work. So some exam work, and then they'll do open classes where choreographers will come in and just teach a routine to somebody. And that's where you get the training of, okay, I've got to learn in this hour, I've got to learn a 30 second routine. Um, so that's where a lot of that memory training comes in. Uh, and the, uh, the next phase of that as well is, uh, competition stuff. So when you're growing up, you know, between the ages of five and 18, um, there may be competitions throughout the year where you will learn, uh, a routine on, in whichever style, multiple styles, whatever. Um, and then your school will go and compete against other schools, um, at these competitions. I didn't do any of those uh at all when i was growing up i was in a little little home studio um in a, in a small town so we just kind of did our own thing um but when i got to college um i joined a hip-hop crew uh in my second year i think um was my first year of doing it and our goal our whole goal was to train a routine for the year then we would take that routine to a competition uh and then hopefully we would make it uh, top two, top three, whatever. And then from then on, we would go and, you know, take it to the next level of that competition. Um, so yeah, I did a, I did a little bit in 2016 and 2017 were the two years of competition that I did. Yeah. Who is considered the gold standard of movers? So if I, th if I throw out some names at us, Joe, I'd like you to rate their moves, um, from a sort of an amateur watcher's point of view, Mark, you can rate them from a professional's point of view. Okay. So I'm going to give you, t I'll give you two Jacksons. I'll give you Jackson Michael and Jackson Janet. I'll give you James Brown. I'll give you... They're all singers. M movers as well. Oh, okay. Timberlake, I'll give you. Right. Uh, who else can we put then in there? Oh, uh, I don't know. If we're sticking with like uh, hip hop, we would go with like Usher. He's he's a dancer. Usher, like Chris Usher. Brown. He's yeah, his Usher collar. and Chris Brown. Chris Usher, Brown was a dancer Usher. first. Apple bottom G's boots with, with the, the fur. There you go. I think that's Flowrider, but yeah. I was looking at her. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I, I like that. A, I could do a slut job. Uh, uh, fucking now. Well, that's a dance move. Why wasn't that on our list? Yeah. Oh, it's my fault, is it? We could have Mr. I don't dance, but I'm dancing for the whole episode. I've got a fucking. I've got. What's this called? I've got a wave. A wave, there you go. That chokes me out into yeah. a slut drop. We've got routine. We've got a phrase. We've got eight counts right there. Okay. Oh, back, sorry, back to the So you've got to the dancers. You've got two Jacksons, you've got a Timberlake, you've got an Usher, Usher you've got a James Usher. Brown. James Brown. Chris Brown as well. And a Chris Brown. Yeah. Oh no, no. He 
be he's a bad man. Up, he's a bad so he's bottom man. of the list from your point of view. No, he's mm. gone. He's out. Yeah. Um, Usher, Usher, uh, Justin. What does he sing? Um, you look cry me like... a river. Yeah. Cry me, cry me, cry me a river. Janet Jackson. Uh... She's your rhythm nation. Yeah. Don't know any songs like that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the other one? J- James Brown. James Brown, yeah. Mark the professional <laughs> opinion on the <laughs> on our contenders, please. Well, um, you know what? Like, if we're if we're going to stick to the uh, stick to the code, Michael is the greatest of all time mover. Fact. He he really like paved the way for you know for individual movement, I guess, and he really like set an incredibly high standard for live performance for sure. I wasn't really taken in by his music, but like you can't really deny the effect that it's had uh on the industry and um justin timberlake i think his 2020 tour was something that i watched on netflix a few years ago and that blew me away like unreal really why good. is he so good he's just clean he's sharp like his um he's sort of he's he's one of those execute like he he executes everything to a t you know, like he he will give you a show if you if you watch his uh, his live concerts, he won't just be there with a microphone charging you a five hundred quid a ticket. Like your five hundred quid is going into like uh, I don't know if we're using that tour as an example. Like he's got these bridges that fly out over the audience. He's got full on band with him on stage the whole time. He's got pyros. He's got dancers who are exquisite, like sensational, and he'll match all of it. Like you take professional dancers, you take the top echelon of American uh, commercial dancers. And he's out there hanging with them, like you know, he he he's he's top. He's like he's like he's the Beyonce, really, of uh of well, he and Beyonce are very similar. B's probably got him beat a little bit. Ah, oh. yes. Are you going to do so Beyonce? He's got the bug, you know. Yeah, t- honestly, I really do. So Joe is he's stepped away from his microphone. He's preparing to do a Bay move. <laughs> he can't believe he's doing this, but here we go. Mark, commentate on it for us. <laughs> Sensational. What's he doing, I love Mark? the commitment, full body commitment. What move is this, Mark? Hips left and right. That's a single ladies, I believe. Ah, uh, the single ladies. Ah, uh, the single ladies. <laughs> ah! That's right. I mean, we've got to face the camera. What are you doing facing me? <laughs> Mark, I just, I, just felt, I just felt the urge. That's I'm what it's about, like, Joe. Let, there you go, let right. go yes. a little bit. I'm See, not Joe, even drunk. It's organic. It not happened. even drunk sangria. And without music as well. I felt good after you that know, as our well. Our pet peeve, our collective pet peeve is dancing without music. And you Here just we did are. it. Do you know I what? I just felt good after it's that. It's infectious. What's the actual dance industry like? Is it, like, I can imagine it being quite catty and bitchy and, or is that yeah. too Diff- far? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like there, there are, you know, absolutely elements of that because it's a, it's a constant competition, you know, like, uh, I guess in the. I want to say like the, the the regular world, like the corporate world or like the sporting world, certainly, you know, you're competing for work. Um, you're competing for work with everybody all the time. But I guess in a regular job, once you've been hired, you're kind of there. Like you can do your role and you can do it to the best of your ability, but no one's coming for your job every five days. You know, in, in our industry, um, obviously there are, there's a whole side of, uh, of bitchiness of being like egos and, and clicks and, you know, uh, everything personal, you know, I don't like that person because etc. Um, but you've also got the element of your most jobs are one offs, most gigs you're going to do, I don't know, you might do a season uh, of like 26 shows, or you might even just do a one off show, okay, we're going to get you in on Saturday night to do this thing. So you've booked this job, you do the job. And then, you know, two weeks later, you're hunting for another one. And the same people that you may have beaten out last week, are going to come to the next audition and now they have no money because they, they, they didn't work last week did they so they're going to be extra hungry and you're like okay i actually want to put a little bit of money away because i'm saving for you know uh brown rice i don't want to have white rice i want to have brown rice uh, next week <laughs> so you know i want to splash out so i'm going to go extra hard for this one as well like you're just constantly competing for work day in and day out um you know you're also training with these people so um, you know, you might do an audition in the morning or in the afternoon, but, you know, the way our industry works is, you know, after that job interview or that audition, you're going to go off and take a class because, you know, you've got an evening free and the choreographer is teaching that you want to, you know, impress or you just want to learn from them and you want to, you know, hone a style. So those people that, you know, may have been cut from the first round of your audition and you've beaten are now in class working their ass wow. off behind you. 
So you're, you're constantly seeing the same faces of the people that are coming for your work. So, you know, there's an element of bitchiness just there already because you're, you know, you're already trying to shoulder everybody else out of work. Um, and it's just natural in that sense. And then you have the, the, I just don't like you because you, you know, did this or did that, whatever. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit heightened, I think in our industry for sure. With that stuff in mind, what <clears throat> is the like worst thing about being a dancer then? Like, surely your undercarriage must be in tatters. Not really. Whoa. No, no, no. You... I don't do splits. I can't split at all. I was thinking more of uh. like a, a Oh, you're not talking physical undercarriage. No, I was talking more physical undercarriage, but I was talking more like air circulation. What well, you said, Mark wouldn't wear what the garments would be. I don't know what the question is. Well, what's the worst thing about being a dancer? <laughs> ignore the, <laughs> like, under full stop, ignore full the undercarriage bit. I think uh, just the inconsistency, really. I mean, we all we all know what we're getting into. You know, work is sparse. There's not a lot going on creatively. There's not you know this this huge plethora of work available. So you know you commit to the career path probably by the time you're 15, um, and you know you know that you want to give it a crack. So you've got 15 to 18. That's three years. Then you're probably going to college for another year or two. So that's already five six years of your life gone. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, you actually you've got no guarantee of work. You know. Um, you might not be good enough. You might be trying to do something that, um, you know, doesn't necessarily suit your style of training. You might realize that you've um, specialized in something that's not the flavor at the moment. So you maybe have to wait a year or two for oh. something that you've learned to actually be applicable in the workplace, you know. Um, so it can be quite hard to actually find the right timing for work. So, you know, not only is there not a lot going on, but you might also completely miss the boat. Like the thing you spent two years learning, um, you know, in, in 2020 isn't going to be what's hireable in 2022 because, you know, the industry has completely moved on. So that's a challenge. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things, like you're constantly facing change and you're having to adapt with it essentially on a weekly basis. You know, there are new things that, that come out, new styles, new music all the time. You know, there are new interpretations of music, um, and you're just constantly having to train and keep up with everybody and also be the best at the new thing immediately because someone else is going to get hired if they're the, better than you. The intensity of this job is bonkers. I just thought mm. it was people who's got some good rhythm, they can put some moves together, yeah, and that's it. You're either good at dancing or you're not. Mm. You're talking about like training deciding from a very young age this is the life you want to go down yeah training day in day out for it mm -hmm. different styles different genres different choreographers that you want to learn from mm -hmm. fuck yeah there's a lot more to this than mm. i originally thought that is fucking intense yeah a, a college day for me would be 8 30 in the morning you're at warm-up at, 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 so fi a, a five-day working week so every every day you'd be 8 30 in the studio warming up and then you'd leave at 4 p.m. And then I would go and either work the front desk to help pay off, um, you know, some of my, uh, you know, debt to the school. Um, or I'd go and deliver pizzas for a couple of hours. And then I'd go to class from 10 o'clock till, you know, hour and a half class was 11.30. Then I'd have to drive home, wake up, do the next thing, you know. So that would be two years of my life and two years of every dancer's life, um, at least, you know. And a lot of these kids now... Uh, aren't going to a traditional school anymore. So it's not like, you know, these these eight-year-olds are going to school and then they're getting driven to the studio by their parents. Like, they've left school and they're going to a studio who also provides or also teaches them maths, also teaches them English, also teaches them history to get them through their school grades. But they're spending their school days dancing. So these kids are freaks. Like, they are insanely talented and just so gifted and honed at such a young level you know, um, they're living that life that I did for a couple of years in college. They're living that from six, eight, all the way through, you know, uh, until, you know, they're, they're, they're old enough for work. That's, it's insane. I hear that and I go, that's why. That's mm. why I didn't. I, I didn't. Didn't make it because I didn't have those opportunities when I was eight. Otherwise, I'd have been the next Fred Eclair. That's right. <laughs> And just as delicious. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'd be that. But I mean, so to fire one kind of back at you, it would have been similar in rugby, no? Like, I mean, rugby is such a, um, I mean, especially where we come from. I know in England, it's a big deal, you know, like it's such a competitive sport that you're, you know, almost every school would have a first 15, second 15. 
you know, you're immediately competing from a young age to be the top of the league, the top of the championship. Okay, we've got to beat, you know, our rival school, whatever. And, you know, you're competing for 15 spots in a squad, right? There's, pr- there's plenty of comparisons similar, right? there. It, yeah. I, it just surprised me because I, process. with my naivety and sheltered life, I just expected, oh, dancers are just people that are good at dancing. Mm. And it's like, well, yeah, but there are also people that graft and put in the effort to get good at dancing. Yeah. And I just, it was, mm. it's enlightening to hear that the graph that you've had to put in to mm. get to where you're at now. Well, I mean, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds cheesy, but it is, you know, I guess it's the same as anything really like any, any sport. I mean, dan- dance is a sport. Sorry. That's what I meant by it's cheesy. Like dancing is a sport in itself. Like it's a, it's a vastly different discipline, but you know, it, it's along the same lines of like, you learn a technique, you graft the technique, you put your body through hell. And then hopefully at the end, you're good enough to get paid to do it. You know, um, and you do it initially for the for the love of it, which is you know again probably similar to playing a sport. Like you get in there because you you fucking love it, right? Um, and then you get to the point where you make the decision: I need to work really, really hard if I want to make it work. And then it becomes a job, and you've committed time and energy, sweat, blood, and tears to actually get to a point, you know, where you're competitive in the industry. You must also have that thing that sports people have of dancing when you're injured or having to go to auditions when you're injured and just yeah. push your body to a place where it doesn't really want to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's something that uh, everybody has experienced at some point. Um, you know, I, I've had a year, over a year now of, um, I think I, th- I think it's patella tendonitis. I think that's the diagnosis of it. So um, basically when we were in COVID, my legs were deconditioning. And then when we came back, my quads yanked up my patella and that stretched the tendon out and I've just been fucked ever since really. So it's been, it's been rehab, uh, for almost a year. Um, you know, just so that I can stay at work and do my job and that's fine. Like that happens, but that's the kind of stuff that, you know, that we all kind of pull together and just push through to do because it's not going to do in, in my case, it's not going to do any permanent damage. It's just a bit of discomfort. I say a bit of discomfort, like it hurts. And it's going to heal gradually over time. So we can just push through and go. So that, that that's the kind of stuff that everybody sort of deals with throughout their lifetime, throughout their career. It's going to be different for everybody. But yeah, you know, pushing through injuries is, is it's nothing really big. You're currently performing in the West End. That's right. Yeah. Let's in swear. Magic Mike. In Magic Mike. Magic Mike Live London. We're at the Hippodrome. Right. So, Tom, being the older gentleman. Thank you. Um, in the trio. Mm today know what magic mic is i didn't know what magic mic was Oof. but on the train down to london today i caught up with magic mic the film the 2012 film oh good lord starring Channing. on the train yeah and i was on one of the little four spots a little table mm-hmm. and i'm just watching it on my phone and there was a large uh, scouse gentleman opposite me oh, and good. a smaller scouse gentleman on my right mm. and they very quickly i think came to some conclusions about yeah. a number of my orientations sure. and the fact that i was watching male strippers <laughs> yeah. on my phone yeah. at half past nine in the morning mm-hmm. so essentially magic mike is a male stripping film is it I mean, there are there are there are elements of like a strip club, right? So like we will, uh, what's the word? We're like we're basically uh, we're I want to say a variety show, but we do remove layers of clothing as well. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a strip club. We're like no one gets a knob out, no one gets a junk, <laughs> no one no one does anything um, below the belt really. Um, it's just a fantastic fun night out. Really, it's just a big party. And there are some semi-naked men around. Surely, mm. like, like what percentage of the audience are Hindus? Oh, Hindus, probably fifty percent. Yeah, they're just maybe they're just less than fifty percent. They're just they're screaming. Surely, mm. like, oh, mm-mm. not not necessarily. No, the Hindus aren't aren't always the party vibe. Oh, really? Mm. We've had this. I've I've had this discussion before, where Hindus are usually groups of like women who have come together. They don't really know each other. They've had an extremely long day of pretending to get along. <laughs> They've had too much to drink, and then they come to Magic Mike, and they either are well washed and they're having a wonderful time, or they're sitting next to someone they've decided they don't like. <laughs> so tired hate to and want to go up, home. I hate to pick you up on it. Yeah. Either they're well washed. Well washed, yeah. So they're like clean. No, no. Had had uh, in, enough alcohol applied to their system to. Oh. 
wash everything away. Have you heard of that before? No, I've like ma- I make up a lot of things. That's so fuck it. I really like that. Well washed. Oh, I'm feeling well washed, actually. Boom. There you go. Yeah. So it's the Magic Mike film and stage show. Hmm. It's not stripping. You've clarified that. No. There are items removed, but it's not No, no. a I mean, male like, strip show. Do you know what? Actually, a lot of commercial dance now will involve like dudes with no shirts on. You know, you watch X Factor. Wait, do you have X Factor here? We do. Uh, the Voice, whatever uh, talent show you have now. Yeah. And a lot of the male performers have, you know, got the got the rig out. Um, so... Uh, How many of them performers would have a darb like this, though? <laughs> I don't or, know what uh, you got, mate. <laughs> Mate, what's under the bonnet? Exactly. Shadow, what's under the bonnet? <laughs> Fuck's sake! Crack the lid. <laughs> no, um, like, yeah, I mean, you're like your your entire career is based on cardio, so normally you're snatched as fuck. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> snatched but, as but fuck. basically, what what I what I meant was like it's not really out of the ordinary for any show now, you know, for guys to to not be wearing shirts, right? Um, and so our show isn't necessarily super uh, niche in that sense. I think what what we do really really well is audience interaction and involvement and just the level of skill that all the boys have um within the show like the cast that we have is top quality top you know everything really like they've they've been there done that some of them have had their careers very lush lavish careers and have come back and gone okay i want to settle down start a family i want to i want to live in one location not travel about um and just sort of you know, stay put because this job can take you all around the place. Um, and others who are out of college, you know, they're, they're young guys ready to like get cracking in the industry. And this job is a fantastic platform to get started. So, you know, there's a, there's a whole mix of, uh, you know, personalities, talent uh, within the show. And that's what we showcase really, really well. There's so much going on. Have you seen Dear John? I think I have actually. I've got no recollection of what it's about or anything. Have you seen Dear John, Tom? If you're referring to the 1980s sitcom of the same name, which you're not, the answer would be yes. Did no, it's the fi- it's the love story with Channing Tatum. With Chan, right? Yeah. And uh, Chan. Mm. Oh, hang on. Sorry, Channing Tatum, yeah. Sorry, hang on. Does that... Is he in the show? Let's just have it. Oh, if he's in, if he's in the country, he'll look in every now and then. Yeah, because yeah. you've met Channing Bill. Tatum. Yeah, yeah, he's our boss. <laughs> Joe, you're blown away. Super nice dude. That's I can't I can't favorite. claim that he's. What the fuck is Channing Tatum like? Is he so nice in real life? He's lovely. He's <gasps> really really nice. I haven't spent lots of one on one time with him, but he's just like he'll sit you down, have a drink, and talk to you one on one like it's nothing. Like really chill dude. Is he the one in the yeah. film who does the move where he goes into the petrol station and he opens the... No, that's who's not that? him. I think you, watch, you must have watched the second film. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's, I think that's the second wow, film. Wow, you've really Did done it? your research. Yeah. Now, well, there's a move, Joe, where he basically tries to put a smile. The, the dare is he's got to make the girl behind the counter smile, mm. who's a bit miserable. Mm. And he does a move where he goes to the, uh, like the fridge and he takes out a bottle of water and he unscrews lids and he pours a little bit over his head. Oh yeah. And then he holds it's all moist. And then he holds the water between his legs and gives it a sudden squeeze, mm. thus expressing an arc of water from his groin area across what, what, the What's that to imply? Well, if you watch it, Joe, on the way home, um, it's quite the move. I will. Mm. And I won't wear headphones. Inspiring. Either. I'll put <laughs> yeah. full blast of the speaker of my phone and I'll do that. Oh my god! I can't believe you met Shannon Tatum. He w- he was a dance though, wasn't he? In his younger, isn't, oh yeah, in the film based oh, yeah. loosely on his uh, years. I I can't pretend that I know too much about his history, but yeah, I I think it's based on his early life. Um, the 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 film is anyway based on his early life and his uh kind of journey into the like the commercial dance world, right? Like he's you know he's gone from basically roughing it all the way into like Hollywood stardom. So, um, you know the the films. Um, a, I, I guess a pretty loose portrayal of of you know what he what he went through and, and his experience. And the live show that we do is it's not really based on the films in terms of the narrative, but the show yeah the show the show that we have kind of more um, it uses the themes of the film rather than telling the same story if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of what we what do. What about Honey? Have you seen Honey? No, I actually haven't. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. What's the story with Any him? dancers out there? It's like Channing Tatum's a janitor and uh, he goes to, he gets some, he gets in trouble with some crime and then he gets sent to this school 
Oh, that step up. That's not honey. Oh, shit. That's step, step up. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, step up. <laughs> I have seen it. I'm back. Let's yes. go. Okay, have you seen yes. Step Up? I've mm-hmm. just described a completely different film. Step right. Up is. I'm sure Honey is a dance film, though. It's just it based is. around a female dancer instead. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. But this one is he falls madly in love with uh, a dancer. Is she the honey? Student. She, yeah. Okay, ignore Honey. Different film. Yeah. yeah. Okay, she's just a woman. The original Step Up. Yeah, Step Up. Yeah. And then he sort of, he's a good dancer, but, you know, they, and then they sort of get dancing together, and it's one of the most wonderful love stories you'll ever yeah, It's fantastic. I think I it's the best Step Up of oh the, my God. the series it's as well. so many mm. great dancers in it. You look, well. there's yeah. genuine happiness on your face as you describe this film. I can't wait to go home and, and say iconic. to Daisy, we're watching Step Up tonight, mm. and I know full well because she wanted to marry Channing Tatum instead of me. Well, she didn't get far off, though, did she? I mean... It's awfully kind of you and also slightly patronising and <laughs> insulting because I know it wasn't meant. Um, we're going to watch that tonight and I'm really mm. excited. Do you know, in a, in, a, in a way, I think Step Up is probably a better portrayal of the live show than what Magic Mike actually is. Oh. Because, like, Chan will get his rig out, but he's also got some really hectic routines in there. So that's kind of what that's kind of what we do as well, do you know, in, in, the, in the same sense. Like, our live show is... A number of routine, uh, you know, a style of dance, acro. We've got, um, you know, uh, what have we got? Like a silks routine, so like full on acrobatics uh, going on, uh, and then also that side where you're like, let's get everything on the hey, table. Hey, check me yeah. out. Yeah. What is the single best <laughs> dance scene in a film, whether it's a dance film or not? Please. Joe, you can chuck some others in. I'm going to chuck in one for the older listeners like myself uh-huh. uh, from Flashdance. Oh, what a feeling. No. That's Lionel Richie. Um, what a feeling. Ba, yeah, ba, was, ba, fuck, ba, I was close. Ba, ba, not far. The dancing on the ceiling. Different song. Oh, <laughs> is it? Yeah. Flashdance. Flashdance, where it. she does that she's a welder by day. Yeah. And a dancer by night. Sure. That's I haven't a seen it. Plausible plot. <gasps> um, okay. More appropriate to our age. And I'm. Uh, what about sa- satisfaction? The music video. Do you know what? You could throw film titles at me all no, day. No, it's a, it's a video. It's a, it's a music. So I can't get no. no. <laughs> get my satisfaction. Faction, you know, is that the one? Like, yeah, I know the I song. Know, I haven't. What's seen... that movie doing there, Joe? That's the. Um, what is it, Mark? What's he doing? Oh, yeah. I guess it's the. Is it like the iconic so. move matched up with the with the song? Is that what's in the music video? <laughs> For people who are listening rather than watching on YouTube, Joe, Joe is doing I'm a little teapot um, and then moving his penis at the same time. It's pussy frost. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Long day, bro. It's the du- No, it's the dance. I just want to dance. <laughs> dance then. Let it all I'm out. I'm trying, but you're judging me. I'm not, thrusting. honestly, I'm not. Please dance. Just, just, yeah, but that doesn't work on a fucking podcast. Well, we have our new dedicated YouTube channel, Joe. What about Coyote Ugly? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Leanne Rhymes. Mm. Well, no, sh- 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 yeah. Dancing in the moonlight. Everybody's <laughs> feeling warm, man. Aren't you thinking of... Um, it's, that's not the song, is it? It's... Um, oh, where's it going to go? Um, it's got moonlight in it. Moonlight, everybody. No, that's feeling. different. That's different. Mark's here, like fucking hell. Why did I say yes to these pair of fucking? Do you know what? Can't stop the moonlight like... glow. That's it. Mm. I actually, my tradition, you know my upbringing. You I actually can't big... stop the moon. You shut fuck up now. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to sing right now, and else. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, my uh, my. Upbringing was actually, and my favourite is gumboot dancing. How's that? What? South African. Yeah. Mm. They wear the big gum gumboots. Yeah. That well. So you're going to stand up and demonstrate yeah, this to it, us. It was often performed by. It was often performed by my uh, one of my favourite bands, band groups, mm. groups called Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Unfortunately, Joseph Shabalala died. Lead singer. Lead singer. He died, but they're going to perform. Um, I believe in Brighton in September, Handy. October time. Fancy it? Yeah. Cool. Uh, anyway. Mark, can you describe for people listening um, Joe's moves, please, from a professional's point of view? Yeah, sure. All right, we've got what looks like a, a two-step variation. Oh, he's clapping under his knee. <laughs> That's right. Very nice. I'm sure you can hear the clapping. Sensational. That's, and the reason That's great. Maybe quite, it may be quite niche. Maybe quite niche. I think it's something that, you know, potentially uh, 
a lot of people could learn and get on board with. The gumboot dance. Honest. Yeah. Township jive. Yeah. Township jive. Not feeling it? Fantastic yeah. party move. Out of me and you, I was expecting you to bring a little bit more dance enthusiasm. Well, apart from saying I love dancing. Yeah, like, but like, I want to... You want more dance? I wanted to see more dance. Why have I the only one that danced? Let's go out dancing after we've finished I think you've show. just done it hugely successfully. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we, don't, we don't really need to... It, there's not, like, a, a, a great urgency to join you because you're wiping the floor with us. I, th I, th I want to believe you, Mark. I want to believe you so hard, but I, mm. I could just hear in your voice uh, a certain level of sarcasm. Nah. And it's... Uh, <laughs> Cut me right here. It's oh. Cut me deep. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I'm quite out of breath now. <laughs> yeah, you are, aren't you? This is really hard work. Jeez. I have really enjoyed listening to you, Mark. You've been brilliant. Cheers, um, and changing my mindset and approach and mm. appreciation for dance. We've got a full than, circle. Rather than just going, yeah. oh, yeah, people who can dance, just dance. That's what you're going to do. But then describing the graft and the dedication and the commitment that you've got to do to actually hone your craft. Mm. It should be it should be obvious, but I just took it for granted. Just thinking, yeah. and also you encouraging me to just it's let freedom, go. baby, it's freedom. Just yes. enjoy it because I felt every time I've danced, I felt like I'm going to have a heart attack, um, <laughs> but also joy. Hey, we'll start gradually. We'll build. We'll build up there. We'll get you to the top. <laughs> so that's a fine line. Yeah. Would you Would you have a dance lesson, Joe? What do you mean? Would you, if a dance lesson were to come to the show, yeah, would to be offered? Would you take it up? Yeah, hundred percent. Let's make it. Of course, happen. I would. You know, every day's a learning day. Great day. I can't wait. Well, we'll get in contact with the show and um, show Joe a few little moves. Ooh, fuck's sake. Mark, thank you so much, mate. Hey, boys, appreciate you. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. Thanks.